Thank you very much, Mr. Pralada, for your kind introduction. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, my title is to deal with Indian aerospace, and uh, when I see Dr. Saraswat sitting there, I remember very well a, a Hyderabad conference where I think Dr. Kota at that time quoted uh, 100% of Indian aircraft are coming outside of India, 100% of maintenance is done outside of India, and 70% of the military aircraft is coming out of India. So he said there must be some change in the next decades. I'm personally convinced that this will happen. Uh, that's why EADS Group and Casirin is here in India. I think the final aspiration will be that uh, the Indian industry will go for international standards to, to be on the same level as other today developed aerospace nations. Um, I would like to give you some foreign perspective on that, uh, elaborating on some, some key success factors which we think are important, and give you some examples how we, in this current phase of Indian aerospace evolution, as Cassidian, uh, try to contribute, in, especially in the defense area. So... First, let me introduce our group. I know that EADS is not very well known worldwide, but you can see it's European Aeronautic Defense Space. We are one of the world-class world class, uh, aerospace companies, and we have four divisions. Airbus is the commercial aircraft. It's Astrium Space. It's Eurocopter for all the uh, uh, helicopter business, and it's Cassidian which I'm presenting, and we are responsible for all the defense activities. Um, I would like, in my first part, I would like to look a little bit back to what happened in Europe to develop the aerospace industry there. Partnership was definitely one of the key success factors, and I will elaborate on that. And then I would go, like to go to India and give you some examples where we are currently uh, doing that. So if you look at the history in Europe, I mean, it started with uh, licensed production from the Americans with the F-4s, with the uh, F-104. Uh, this was the first stage. Then uh, it starts to have some advanced technology. We had first cooperation between, in the Tornado program between three nations. And later on, you know, the current status, the European aerospace industry is fully developed. And I think here you see more the uh, military development, but uh, it's very clear that this development in the military part has been the uh, foundation for all the commercial aircraft and finally the foundation of Airbus and, and Eurocopter, which you know are very successful today on the market. Uh, what's also important is that co uh, partnership means also that different nations and the leading, leading industry have found together their way of collaborating, of transferring the spe specific know-how to the, each other so that finally each, each of the participating nations and countries had a chance to build up the um, uh, capabilities and in their national uh, industry. I think this is a very important thing to understand. I think the, the benefits of this process are more or less obvious. I mean, you have a very good uh, return of investment. I mean, if everybody is sharing, you have good product capabilities. Uh, what I also mentioned, and very important, it was the only chance for each of the nations in Europe to build up their own industrial base. Um, it's definitely a source for high-skilled development. And it's today the baseline for interoperability and standardization in aerospace industry. Um, prerequisites for that is, I mean, you need uh, the investment. You have to build up the industrial capabilities. Um, I don't go to the details, but I think the most important thing, and uh, this was elaborated by my predecessor is speaking here. I mean, you need the skilled people for that. I mean, you have to go uh, trained. You have to need them in sufficient quantity, but also with the right education. So what is the process for that? 
I mean, if, if the nation decides to build up these capabilities, um, I think, and India in the defense area, I think, has done that, identify their areas of interest, and go really through this process of technology maturity levels, because I think it's important to have finally the right capability in place which you want. What is the vehicle for this process? The vehicle for this process is, and if you want to be quicker, you can either develop yourself or you find the right partner who is ready and willing to transfer technology which is not available in your country. So, uh, and this is the baseline for all the industrial following phases up to the final industrial capability. I think it's a a really closely tied together element to have technology transferred, transferred to be tied to the industrial capabilities. And it's not just addressing technology transfer, it should cover all the resulting buildup of industrial capabilities. So in the second section, I would a little bit elaborate on another element which I think is very important because um, sometimes people focus on just one element. I think aerospace capabilities you have to build from the beginning to the end of a, of a product life cycle. Um, here, uh, Cassidin in India, uh, we had uh, our nucleus in the engineer center we, uh, uh, we founded two years ago. And I mean, I think it's very specific and uh, because I think we are still pioneers in doing defense activities as a foreign company here in India. Um, in the meantime, after two years, we have built around that uh, all the other capabilities which I think uh, we need uh, as a company to contribute uh, for the full life cycle uh, because I think this is a very crucial element that not just looking at one phase of production, that's one element. Uh, I mean, you have to start really at the beginning with system concepts on development, on production, yes, but also on the very long in-service phase of especially uh, military aviation. So you have to, to have an, a holistic approach on that. I think uh, you all know that especially the transition between the different phases of this life cycle are very dangerous and difficult, uh, have a lot of, can have a lot of issues to be, to have these in an efficient and uh, cost-effective way. So I would like to give you some examples of uh, what Cassidian is doing in that direction. I would really start on the left uh, corner. Um, what you can see here and what we intent and have decided to do here in India is to build up what we call System Design Center. Uh, it's finally a simulation in Wyan which gives you the capability to model system capabilities of your products you want to have. You, have, uh, you can design them along your operational requirements and what you can do in an environment like that, you can test your system capabilities you think you should design along your operational requirements and that in the right scenario so that you finally can with your customer have a dialogue on what you think or what you propose for the, for the future capabilities. He can uh, reflect on his operational requirements. We have found out and we have uh, on all, our major, on all our European sites, uh, major sites, we have built up a capability like that. And it's a wonderful and very effective tool to get in dialogue with just that verify operational requirements versus uh, the uh, system design you are proposing. Though that's one element, starting on the low end in, this, in the concept phase of a program. Design development. I, I've just told you that we are very proud to have uh, the uh, a pioneer engineering center for defense activities here in, in India. 
And our target finally is to build Indian capabilities, but also use these Indian capabilities as sure for India, but also for as a, a, a capability base for all our activities. So this center is part of our global engineering uh, organization. And I would like just bring to your knowledge two elements which have been really made in India. Though there is no, no double or it's a single source development we decided to have here in India. Uh, it's, uh, the first one is a, a special high accuracy air pressure measurement system, which is, let's say, designed to, to give uh, combat aircraft uh, a very precise uh, uh, indication for the level with a target in the future to, to use this for the military aircraft to participate, especially in the dense European airspace. So you need that because of uh, the uh, air traffic control requirement, and if you want to fly military aircraft in the future in civil airspace, especially in Europe, there will be something even legally coming in the future, and this device is, the, is, is fully designed system, software, hardware here in India. We are going currently under testing. We, we plan to have it for flight testing. So it's really the first Indian Casita in India made product here in India. The second one is, it's a similar, same approach, fully done here in India. It's a prototype for a structural integrated antenna, which gives you the possibility uh, for GPS communication or satellite communication. You hear the, the C here, or well, it's indicated on the picture. It's, it's something for the top of an aircraft to, to have the connection to the satellites. It's also done fully here in India. And all these two examples, I think, are perfect uh, yeah, examples for uh, that we are really doing that technology transfer, building capabilities here in India. And uh, <clears throat> also the other example, we are really proud, uh, and I look now to Mr. Subramanian, that we are uh, that we are allowed to participate to bring the LCA program to a success. Uh, and that's why we are for, for consultancy and we try on your request to bring uh, support to the program where, whenever this is needed and we are really proud to be part of that. But it's also expression of uh, willingness to bring knowledge and technology to India. I mean, <clears throat> this one, uh, the next one, you know this cycle for production. But we have also already some Indian examples uh, which are done. Uh, it's called uh, MILES. It's a self-protection sensor which has been in collaboration with DRDO uh, designed and which is meanwhile into production and uh, here in India. So it's a typical process technology was transferred was modified, adapted to Indian requirements. It's now under production here in India. Uh, we have also founded two years ago uh, with a private partner, a joint venture, which is Larsen and Tubro, where we intend to, to offer for the Indian market uh, defense electronics, radars, uh, and electronic warfare. This is also in operation. And we have, in addition, also what we call an industrialization uh, initiative which is more on the manufacturing side with a target to bring on the one side uh, uh, carbon composite uh, technologies, uh, fiber optic technologies, but also more simpler uh, technologies like uh, loom production, but with one target to do that here in India to fulfill the international requirements for example, for products here we have in Europe. That's, so it's always two things, technology plus the right qualification and certification according to the international standards. Um, I think the last phase, which is often forgotten, but it's the longest phase, and again a very difficult one in the transition from production to the... To the um, um, used by the Air Forces finally, 
You have to, so to install all the processes, training necessary to support the aircraft for, for the fifth, for next 50 years normally. And all in that area, uh, we have started to do some activities here. We have built with an, a big Indian private company a test system which can be used either for uh, lab or rig testing, also we can use it for aircraft ground testing. In our own facility, we doing IT tools for future logistic support, especially in the direction of data preparation and using post-flight analysis data uh, for, let's say, maintenance cycles and technical publications. You say technical publications, maybe standard, but again, here is it. We want to do that here in India also in a way that we can use that for, for our international programs. So it's always Yes, for ink building capabilities in India, for India, but we want to use it also for the outside India world. I just want to give you an example, which is maybe a special uh, uh, scenario out of Germany, but there has been, now in the meantime, seven years ago, uh, decided that, we, that the Air Force wants to build a very close collaboration with, um, with industry, the simple reason is in that case for the, for the operation of the Eurofighter. It's for, to support, it's to, to maintain the maintenance lines are done with industrial people, uh, with uh, military people. So it's really in the meantime uh, a model which is uh, working very successful, I think still a very unique one. But it gives you an example what can happen in the future uh, in these especially defense-oriented uh, uh, um, activities. And it depends uh, how far the Air Force wants to finally outsource activities to be more efficient or to be more productive or cost-effective. But this is working very well in, 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 in India and uh, your air chief has visited this last year. This was what I heard very impressed of that. So uh, finally, what is the conclusions I would uh, transfer? I think uh, one message is technology transfer is a very powerful mean to build capabilities in a country. If you com combine it with a long last lasting partnership, it's even more powerful. And if you are able to span it over the whole life cycle of a, of a product, it's maybe even more, more powerful and a very good solution to build corporations. And I think you, you know, Cassidian is prepared and we are here not in, in India, not only because of the big market perspectives we want to build here, in Indian and in Indian capability, Indian Cassidian um, um, industrial structure, and to confirm you, uh, just to bring to your knowledge, it has been recently decided that we use our Indian operations for the whole Asia Pacific region. That's why I've been nominated the recent days, uh, in addition to my function as CEO of India. For, as a responsibility for the whole Asia Pacific region, but I think it's a, this reflects uh, the importance uh, Cassidian gives uh, to the country India. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Peter. Well, I very nicely brought out how a small setup in India. He hardly has 100 plus employees, but uh, trying to help growth of uh, industry, aerospace industry complex in the country very nicely. Maybe a couple of questions anybody is having, clarifications. Otherwise, we assume very nice coverage and uh, you. wish you all the best. And very nice that uh, you brought all aspects of the industry growth here. Thank you. Thank you.